Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Gold Rush Tony Beats may be set to double gold haul, while Parker Schnabel may lose it all. Gold Rush Season 14 has been all about gold mining and lofty goals. In Hey Parker, it's Rick, Parker Schnabel and Rick Ness talked for the first time in years. Moreover, Rick had a special requisition, he needed a new loader. Luckily, Parker spent $15 million on some land and a cornucopia of mining equipment. He takes care of Rick, and everything is happy-go-lucky. However, in this new episode, Parker's situation quickly turns serious. Schnebel took a big gamble at the beginning of the season. Will this lead him to more riches, or will he be haunted with regret? Meanwhile, the Viking, Tony Beats, is continuing his venture into the Indian River claim. Will this move be worth all of the hassle? Lastly, Rick Ness has a new loader, but does he have enough team members to get to the gold? Here is a sneak peek into the next episode of the Discovery series. What happens in Gold Rush Season 14, Episode 4, Free Agent? Gold Rush Season 14 is rolling along. Right now, Rick Ness has a loader, but is without a mechanic or other essential crew members. Will this be the episode that sees a completed team rally? What is for sure is that Rick doesn't have money, while Parker is spending money like crazy. Will these problems be alleviated? According to IMDb, there are going to be some tense moments in this upcoming episode. On the brink of going bankrupt, Parker tries to tap an old honey hole to turn the tide. It doesn't work out and Parker has to spend more money to try to find gold. Rick tries out a new miner with a misfit past. Tony battles flooded creeks at Indian River to access the gold. Firstly, it looks like Team Rally is getting bigger. The season is going fast. Rick needs a full crew, and they need to be getting to the gold now. Ness has already confessed that he had some trust issues with his former team. But is he rushing things or is he finding the team that he can trust to get him to his 1,000-ounce goal? Has Parker Schnibble bitten off more than he can chew? He took a huge risk and invested a boatload of money. Also, he got his wish to be free of giving Tony royalties. Does Parker need to be careful what he wishes for? Is he going to regret this decision at the end of the season? Tony Beats checks out the Indian River Dredge. Nothing makes Gold Rush star Tony Beats happier than working equipment. In this upcoming episode, free agent, Tony, and Monica Beats check out the dredge on Indian River. They even take a sample and see some flakes and a nugget. It looks like Tony will have a big season. He has dreamed of returning to the Indian River claim for a while. This season may prove to be the profitable season that he needs. The sun barely peaked over the jagged peaks of the Yukon, casting long, cold shadows over the desolate landscape. The crisp morning air hung heavy with the promise of another grueling day. The ground, once frozen solid, had begun to thaw in the heat of the short Arctic summer, turning into a quagmire of mud and rock. Yet beneath that treacherous surface lay a glittering treasure that had drawn countless dreamers, schemers, and prospectors to this remote corner of the world, gold. Tony Beats, the legendary Dutchman known as the Viking, stood on the crest of a hill overlooking his sprawling claim. The grizzled veteran of the gold fields, with his trademark beard and no-nonsense demeanor, had seen it all. But this year was different. This year the stakes were higher, the risks greater, and the rewards— well, the rewards were potentially life-changing. Rumors had been swirling around the campfires and in the bars of Dawson City. Tony Beats was on the verge of something big, something that could double his already impressive gold haul. The word was that Tony had discovered a new section of ground, untouched and rich with pay dirt, a place where the gold lay thick and deep. But like everything in this unforgiving land, it wouldn't come easy. As Tony surveyed his operation, he couldn't help but feel a surge of anticipation. The new dredge he brought in, a massive, hulking beast of machinery, was unlike anything the Yukon had ever seen. It was a gamble, a huge investment, but if it paid off, it would change the game entirely. Tony had always been one to take risks, to push the boundaries, and this time was no different. The old-timers shook their heads and muttered about the folly of it, but Tony knew better. The gold was there waiting and he intended to take every last ounce of it. Meanwhile, across the valley, Parker Schnibble, the young gun of the gold mining world, was facing his own set of challenges. Parker, who had practically grown up in the shadow of the Klondike, 
had made a name for himself as a prodigy of the gold rush. But this season, everything seemed to be going wrong. The once reliable equipment was breaking down at the worst possible times, the crew was stretched thin, and the gold was harder to find than ever before. Parker paced back and forth in the mud, frustration etched across his face. He had poured everything he had into this season, every dollar, every ounce of energy, every sleepless night spent poring over maps and soil samples. But the Yukon was a fickle mistress, and she seemed determined to teach Parker a hard lesson. The gold wasn't there, not in the quantities he needed. He was bleeding money, losing ground, and with each passing day the prospect of coming up empty-handed loomed larger. The young miner was no stranger to setbacks, but this time the stakes were higher than ever. He had taken a risk, venturing into a new claim, one that had shown promise but had yet to deliver. Parker had always prided himself on his ability to read the land, to sense where the gold would be, but this time his instincts seemed to have betrayed him. The gold was sparse, elusive, and as the days wore on, the pressure mounted. Parker's crew, loyal and hardworking, could sense the tension. They knew what was at stake, and they rallied around their leader, determined to pull off a miracle. But as the weeks dragged on, even the most optimistic among them began to doubt. The Yukon had chewed up and spit out better men than Parker Schnabel, and it seemed intent on doing the same to him. Back on Tony Beat's claim, the mood was cautiously optimistic. The new dredge had begun to pay off, bringing in gold at a rate that even Tony hadn't dared to hope for. The ground was rich, just as he'd suspected, and the sluice boxes were filling up fast. The Viking had been right, and his gamble was paying off in spades. The whispers of doubt that had followed him were quickly silenced by the steady clink of gold hitting the pans. Tony watched with satisfaction as his crew worked tirelessly, the sun glinting off the yellow metal as it flowed through the sluice. This was what he lived for, the thrill of the hunt, the rush of seeing his instincts pay off. The Yukon was a harsh, unforgiving land, but for those who knew how to play the game, it could also be incredibly rewarding, and Tony Beats had just hit the mother load. But in the Yukon, fortunes can change in an instant. A sudden storm could flood a claim, washing away weeks of hard work. A mechanical failure could bring everything to a grinding halt, and as Tony well knew, even the richest ground could run dry, leaving nothing but empty gravel behind. The key was to keep pushing, to never give up, to keep digging until you found that next vein of gold. For Parker Schnibble, that lesson was becoming all too real. As he stood on the edge of his claim, watching the machines churn through dirt that seemed increasingly barren, he knew he was running out of time. The gold wasn't there, and unless something changed, he was facing the very real possibility of walking away from this season with nothing to show for it. The thought gnawed at him, a constant, nagging worry that he couldn't shake. But Parker wasn't ready to give up, not yet. He had learned from the best, from men like Tony Beats, who had shown him that the Yukon didn't give up her treasures easily. If there was gold to be found, Parker would find it. He had to. The alternative was unthinkable. As the season wore on, the Yukon's relentless pace continued. The miners toiled day and night, racing against the clock, against the weather, against each other. Tony Beats, with his booming laugh and iron will, seemed unstoppable, his dredge devouring the earth and spitting out gold at an astonishing rate. Parker Schnibble, driven by a need to prove himself, dug deeper, worked harder, determined to turn his luck around. In the end, the gold rush is a test, a trial by fire that separates the true prospectors from the pretenders. For Tony Beats, the promise of doubling his gold haul was within reach, a glittering prize that only needed a few more weeks of hard work to secure. For Parker Schnibble, the specter of losing it all loomed large, a harsh reminder that in the Yukon, nothing is guaranteed. As the days grew shorter and the first signs of winter began to creep into the air, both men knew that the end was near. The Yukon was a land of extremes, where fortunes could be made and lost in the blink of an eye, and as the season drew to a close, the only certainty was that the gold rush would claim its due, one way or another.